In this video, I'm going to look at removing and either replacing or cleaning and then replacing the map sensor on a Ford Duratec HE engine. Uh, on the Duratec, it's actually a T-map sensor. The T stands for temperature uh, because it uh, doubles as a um, electronic thermometer in the Duratec's case. A quick and dirty summary of what map or manifold absolute pressure sensors do. They measure the pressure, atmospheric pressure in the uh, in the manifold, and in doing so, they allow the engine to manage its tune correctly um, and uh, get the correct ratio of air and fuel mixture. Now, symptoms of a uh, dodgy T-map sensor might be a, a very rough idle or uh, particular problems with stumbling uh, when decelerating, and uh, also uh, problems when accelerating. Although, of course, those symptoms could be a number of other issues as well. I'm not going to go away into uh, the complexities of uh, engine tune problems in this video. We're just going to uh, treat this as a, a sort of normal service item. And I suggest that you uh, do clean the map sensor on uh, some kind of regular basis, uh, maybe about the same sort of interval that you might replace your engine air filter, for example. Now, the uh, map sensor on the Duratec is not difficult to remove from the manifold per se. It's just held in place with one screw, but it is in quite an inaccessible location uh, because it is down quite low on the manifold and the uh, gap between the manifold and the front of the engine bay in your car, whether it's a Mondeo or a Focus, uh, is likely to be not very uh, large, which makes it awkward to get a uh, driver down there. And it's, uh, if you don't know exactly where it is, it's actually quite hard to even see. Uh, so here's a shot with the uh, manifold removed from the engine and taken out of the car. And uh, the, this is the T-map sensor right here with the single Torx head uh, screw holding it onto the manifold. All right, first thing we're going to do is disconnect the uh, negative battery cable, um, partly because we don't want um, any risk of uh, electricity in the circuit when we go unplugging the sensor but uh, also because we want to reset the engine's keep alive memory uh, because we're going to be modifying something that may affect uh, how it um, handles the tune. So we want it to uh, relearn that from scratch. So this is a uh, T T20 Torx drive, just what's required. And as you can see, this is a bit which um, fits into a uh, socket adapter, which can go onto a socket wrench like this. Um, so if you, do, if you only have a screwdriver with a long handle, then that's not going to be especially useful. Um, something like this, so I can just squeeze in there and um, I can use it to work it. When you do the screw up again, you're going to have to be very, very careful not to go over torquing it, because of course it is only a small screw and you could easily strip the threads using all the um, leverage of this. But if you, you know, if you just action it around here, then you'll be fine. So to uh, get to the map sensor, um, firstly we need to remove this uh, wiring harness and just uh, sort of shunt it a few inches out of the way. It unclips at the top and then it just is loose enough you can just um, get it out of your way. And uh, then you need to get your drive bit into the screw. Uh, try to position yourself somewhere where you can actually see what's going on. Uh, easier said than done, but it is possible. Then uh, get it loose and uh, once you've loosened the screw you should be able to take the um, if you're using a ratchet handle like this, you can take the handle off and uh, just unscrew the screw using your thumb and forefinger on the um, on the bit itself, just like a regular screwdriver. And uh, once you've got the screw out, then you can um, pull the map sensor itself out of the manifold. Now it's it's held in place uh, further with a um, uh, rubber O-ring, which is the uh, seal between the sensor and the manifold itself. And you simply pull on that, you just pull it out, you might need to sort of work it side to side a little bit. Um, it wants to stick a little bit, simply because it is a seal, uh, but it, it will just pull loose. And then once the sensor is loose from the manifold, uh, the obviously it's still connected to its cable, so you need to uh, remove its plug, and that is a usual system with these plugs. It's just a little tab in the middle which you depress, and then it will unplug easily. I found it easier to remove the sensor first before unplugging the cable, uh, just because the cable's in a bit of an awkward location. And finally, here is the map sensor removed from the manifold. And you can see the O-ring seal there, that's the green thing. Now the uh, delicate bit of the sensor itself is uh, comprised of two metallic sort of probes, which are enclosed in this uh, plastic cage presumably for protection, and uh, I'm not going to go touching them with any tool or anything, uh, just um, to avoid any risk of damage. 
I'm simply going to spray cleaner on uh, on the whole thing uh, externally. So what I'm going to use is brake clean because I have some. Uh, any sort of solvent will probably do so long as you're confident it won't damage the uh, plastic or the, uh, the rubber o-ring which I want to leave on there. So I'm just going to spray it from all angles with uh, brake clean here and you can see uh, already the uh, filthiness coming away in the fluid and uh, coming off it here. So that's it, and uh, that's uh, what I'll call clean. Certainly uh, better than it was before. And before I go putting it back in, I'm just going to get a, a Q-tip and uh, soak it in a little bit of brake clean, and then just clean as best I can the internals of the uh, port where the map sensor goes on the manifold itself, just to make sure that it's not at all blocked up in there. And then uh, to reinstall uh, the sensor is just the reverse of removal. Again, I uh, recommend that you plug the connector in first, and then you can put the sensor back into its hole in the manifold. Uh, the rubber seal will require you to use a bit of pressure, so try to do that in a sort of axial, normal manner. And once it's home, you can put the screw back into position. Use your fingers first, then get the bit on it, and uh, do it up snug but uh, make sure you don't over tighten it. As I said before, it would be easy to strip the plastic and the screw doesn't really do anything apart from just ensure that it doesn't come loose once this, the seal is really a press fit. And once it's home, that's, you know, that it's doing its job. You don't need to worry too much about it. Okay, then we're done. Last things to do are replace that wiring harness back into its original position. Then we can reattach the battery negative cable and finally try to start the car. Now, uh, in my case, I had a bit of difficulty getting it to start. It didn't want to uh, fire the engine on the first few attempts, as you can see here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why that was, whether it was something to do with the map sensor being clean now, or whether it was um, the fact that the Keep Alive memory had been reset and its uh, previous learned behavior was um, something that it was now missing. But uh, either way, I just kept trying and uh, eventually it uh, fired on the fifth attempt and uh, once you've got it going then uh, let it idle for um, about five minutes or so and then you could take it for a uh, easy drive just to um, give the ECU a bit of uh, a head start on learning its new um, its new behavior and then you're uh, done all right hope this was helpful for somebody out there have fun